First Minister of Scotland, uh, Kate Forbes, uh, who is now able uh, to join us. Uh, a, a very good morning to you, Deputy First Minister. Good morning. Um, would you welcome this new council? Is it significant enough? Uh, does, it, does it mean enough to you or not? Well, we are in good faith engaging with it. We said back in July that we wanted to reset the relationship between the UK government and the Scottish government. And so we're engaging fully and constructively in today's uh, event. Quite obviously, the value of any engagement is only as good as the results it produces. And we've been quite clear about the items on our agenda, which is to see a different approach taken by the Chancellor in the upcoming budget, and also to see things like the ACORN project, Scotland's carbon capture and storage facility in Scotland, being funded. Um, what, what would you like to see from Rachel Reeves at uh, uh, the budget? Well, I think people voted for change in July. They didn't vote for more of the same. They didn't vote for more austerity. They didn't vote for more challenges in our public services. So we would like to see her take a very different approach to uh, the budget. It's all very well saying that things are uh, really tough and uh, things are difficult. But to be perfectly honest, we were saying during the election that Labour weren't being straight with the public about the challenges in our public finances. And I think that right now she has an opportunity to help us get out of these difficulties by injecting more funding into our public services, particularly into our NHS, which is seeing higher demand and yet spending power eroded by inflation over the last few years. So more taxes as well then to fund that if necessary? Well, she has choices. So in Scotland, we have taken difficult choices on taxation. There's an additional £1.5 billion because of the difficult decisions we've taken on tax. So it's not easy, but it is an option. But the other thing is to look at her fiscal rules. She abides within certain fiscal rules. They were set by the Conservatives. And our option would be to, to reconsider uh, those and to see if there's a way of uh, prioritising uh, the right kind of spend which will really accelerate growth in this country but more than that will be able to meet the rising demand that we're seeing across our public services. Is, is there a balance in your mind of how successful you'd like the new council, the new engagement uh, with the Westminster government uh, to be because I guess the more successful it is, the less likely full independence is for Scotland? Well, that's never been proved true in the past. So we know that from polling figures, there's still very robust, resilient support for independence. And that has outlasted Conservative governments, it's outlasted the Labour government. At the end of the day, people in Scotland believe that Scotland's future is best decided by those who live in, in Scotland. So at the end of the day, today's event is about the immediate opportunities to improve lives in Scotland, to deliver change. That's the premise on which we are willing to engage constructively with the UK government. If they are willing to partner with us on tackling child poverty, on building resilient public services, on uh, establishing economic prosperity, then they have a willing partner with us. Don't get me wrong, a lot of this engagement happens outside staged events like today, which have their place, but at the end of the day, that work is ongoing on a daily basis through engagement that I would have quite regularly with the secretaries of state in different departments, all with an aim of improving lives and delivering the change that I think people voted for. So you said staged events. So is this whole thing today a gimmick from Keir Starmer? I mean, we're, we're not characterising it as that. We're characterising it as a, a, an election pledge that they made. I suppose it remains to be seen whether it will deliver a change. So uh, I note that uh, people have, have asked, journalists have asked the, the Labour government, will they be in listening mode? And that's the big question. Will they be in listening mode? Will they be willing to take on board uh, points that we put to them? I'll give you an example. Last week, £22 billion was announced for two carbon capture storage uh, projects in England. Now, we've had a carbon capture and storage project since 2015 that's sort of been snubbed three times by successive UK governments. And we're very hopeful that it receives the, the funding it requires because it's so critical to reaching our net zero targets, not just in Scotland, but across the UK. 
that's an issue that I know the First Minister intends to raise with the Prime Minister. And so perhaps uh, after today, I could come back to you as to whether he's listened and whether he's willing to deliver, because that will be the real test of whether today delivers change mm -hmm. or is just a set piece event. Please do come back. We uh, we look forward to, to the review of uh, this weekend's gatherings uh, and today. Kate Forbes, thank you.